Hi everyone, welcome to our Immigrant Career Corner series where we are going to be discussing all about career transition. And if you're new today, I am Priya from It's OKR OK and It's OKR OK is a content platform for South Asian immigrants and we aim to educate, entertain and empower them. We are bringing today's episode from Seattle, where today we are going to be talking about transitioning into HR or recruiting or talent acquisition. And the guest that we are bringing for you today is someone that you're aware of if you've been following us for a while. I'm excited to introduce Shreya Mehta, who's a talent acquisition partner with Uber. Previously, she has done talent acquisition with TikTok, Amazon, and Microsoft. However, her journey has been full of ups and downs, and I'm sure you will find a ton of that relatable. So stay tuned so that we can actually understand how she moved from India and transitioned into the career of HR and recruiting. The episode is going to be very action-packed and we are going to be leaving you with super actionable skills and strategies that you can use to transition into recruiting. So we are going to be covering about the skills, the certifications that you should be using. So like real certifications we will be talking about. We will be talking about how do you translate some of the work that you have done in India into US. So not all of that is lost. We will also talk about the companies that you should be thinking about when you're starting to transition into recruiting. So stay tuned because it's an action-packed episode for all of you. So Shreya, you've had a very interesting journey full of ups and downs. You came here on an edge four, you moved to F1 and then broke through and transitioned into HR coming from a finance background. So much um, of interesting journey and I'm sure many people who have a very different background sometimes want to transition into recruiting or HR and they just don't know how to get started. So tell us a little more about your journey and then we will get into the transitioning as well. All right, perfect. Now, when you put it that way, I realize that there have been like so many ups and downs there. But yes, to H4, F1, H4 again, and then H1 now. But in back in India, I was more of a finance manager. So I was into CACS, so Chartered Accountancy Company Secretariat. And I did like accounting, auditing and all of that. When I came here, I knew that I would take like another two or three years to get my EAD because by that time, all the processes needed to be done. So I had like two, op two options, like either like to sit and wait for that or like to actually get into F1. And that's the option I took that I got into F1. I got my master's and then I started from there. But then, of course, like anybody else who's coming here and if they have an EAD, if they have an opportunity to like start working right away, but they're just looking for that right opportunity. I would really say like get into like different certifications, online courses, um, networking skills, and of course, like talk about transferable skills and they can get into HR. They don't have to do like bigger courses like, you know, a master's for two years or like a year of master's and everything like that. So Shreya, um, thank you for sharing that. But you know, there is so much content out there that talks about the fact that we got to do certifications, we got to do networking, but there is not a lot of content that exactly talks about the certifications that one must do to break into recruiting or HR. So can you shed some light into those certifications that one must have or what those basic qualifications look like if I am someone who's interested in pursuing HR or recruiting? Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you bring those difficult questions which has not been answered. So we would definitely talk about those certifications. So for me, the, the journey was different, of course. But then for those certifications, I think there's one thing called as HRCI. I think it's Human Resource um, Certification Institute and something like that. They have multiple certificates and for different levels, they have different certificates. So someone who has some experience can go for a different certification. Someone who has like no experience back in, H in India in HR, they have a different certification. Each certification, so one of them is I think PHR, which is like professional human resource. Another is like APHR, so like associate professional HR. So someone who's just getting into it can start with like associate. Someone who has some experience, has some degree back in India, they can start with PHR. Um, another level would be I think SPHR, which is like I think Society of Professional Human Resource. And then again, again, depending on like what kind of experience they had in India, most all of these have some prerequisites. So if you've had like no experience, then you need to do like APHR. Um, they are almost like a year long course. They would send you like modules and everything. You just have to give exams and they would give you these certifications. Almost all the companies, they do, you know, they do um, keep, keep this into mind that they you have done a certification, they would credit that. 
um, a lot of the companies would not do it depending on where you want to land. So if you're just going for an entry level positions, all the companies would consider this. Another online certificate that we have is I think the Harvard School has an online program for it. And then we can like, you know, put more in the caption, but then they have an online certification for it. We can do it again. It's a paid certification. So all, most of the companies would would talk about it, would take a credit for that. So I have. And for all of you who are listening, I will link all of the certifications that Shreya mentioned in the description box. So you will have a starting point. But Shreya, I want to come back to a couple of certifications you mentioned, right? Like APHR. Um, like, and I understand these are a little more for people who entry level and you are starting. But help me understand what is the process like? So am I going into the APHR um, website and just signing up and seeing what the cost looks like? And it's I can do it on my own time or do I have to go there in person? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, I think that's a great follow-up question, Priya. So we have the website is HRCI, and then then they have all of these certificates. So when you would actually go on the website, they'll have all these certificates. Let's talk about APHR. So if you go to that certificate, you open the page, yes, there will be like all the details about like how many hours of coaching classes would be there. You don't have to go anywhere. All of these, they would send out materials to your home. Once you pay, you they'll send out material to your home, and then you can just sit and watch those videos on your own time. So it's pretty much self-paced you'll have like assignments to do that you'll have to submit on time to complete the whole certificate within a specific period of time so there won't be like a time limit to something so like to your assignments and anything but definitely there'll be a time limit to your whole certificate as such so for everyone who's watching please don't worry because i will link all the certifications that shreya mentioned in the description box so you will access you will be able to access it at your own time but what we are going to cover now is shreya you mentioned so many certifications but let's start with PHR for example say I am someone who's looking to pursue PHR understand these are entry level certifications for someone who's just looking to break into HR but to get to PHR what where do I get started like what website do I go to how does it all work all right, I think that's a great question. So for PHR, go to HRCI website, which is Human Resource Certificate Institute. So just go to that website in the search box, just go for PHR. They would, like the, that page would open up, they'll have all the information about how much do you need to pay, how much time would you you know take to complete it? So I think the the certificate the application form is around like fifty to hundred dollars, and then um, the course itself is like around three hundred dollars or something, and then they would send out modules to your place, and then you need to read. But then they'll also have some video recordings and everything, so you just need to go through that also. It's pretty self-paced, and I think the whole certification would take somewhere from like six to one year, six months to one year to complete depending on your pace on that and depending on the assignments and examinations that you would take. And Shreya, I know you answered a little bit of this, but help me understand across all the certifications you mentioned, are there certain certifications that I can just complete in a week and certain certifications that take up to six months to a year? And do companies give priority to the duration it has taken me to do a certification? Like talk to me about how that entire process works based on all the options you just suggested. All right, so I really say that's a vast question, but I'll try answering that. So I don't think that companies per se, um, you know, would prioritize a week or six months. I would just say if you're doing something in a week, the material, the content, the things that you're learning would be only this much and something that you're doing for six months would be that much. Um, none of the certificates in HRCI would be for a week. Everything would be for like three to six months because you would have to give exams. There would be certificate that would be delivered to your place. And that's something that you can put it on LinkedIn. That's something that you can actually show to companies like degree. Um, so I wouldn't say that it would be like small duration. Why? Because they actually talk about different types of, you know, work within HR and then learnings within the HR. And then they would make, they would talk about the tools, um, the software that you can use and then how the industry actually works. Um, so anybody who's trying to get into entry level position, I probably wouldn't even suggest doing a one week course. That is a good starter. If you're trying to just learn about it, but I would say if you're trying to land a job through that, that's going to be extremely difficult. So thank you for sharing uh, the whole, like the insight around how companies think about it, because I also personally get so many requests saying that I've done this LinkedIn certification, which is for a week, is this going to help me? And from what I understand is these certifications are helpful if you are trying to do a refresher or if you're trying to still understand whether it's a sort like the right uh, field for me. but 
let, let's go back and understand what are the minimum qualifications that a company thinks about when they are hiring someone for HR. It's definitely not this one week certification, it's the certifications you're talking about, right? So help me understand what this process looks like. Yeah, I think, um, so for the companies, I think every job description would have basic qualifications, right? Most of them would definitely need your bachelor's degree, either from here or from there. If you're looking for a like, specific HR role, they would say like bachelor's in HR, right? Or bachelor's in psychology and all of those things. Something that can directly relate your work, your experiences, your education to HR industry. Uh, but then that being said, if you are from like other industries that, you know, which is not HR related and you come here and you want to figure out how do you actually get into it, then these sort certifications would be extremely helpful because these certification would provide you that information that you would need one to crack that interview first of all second to actually you know build up your resume because then there you can put like you've done the certification so that would give some credibility to that but then third and the most important if you start working then you can actually resonate with the terminology resonate with the process that you know the HR or the company is actually taking care of. And Shreya, like I know you are not at an entry level position and I'm sure we all built up to where we are, but I realized we never dig deeper into what is it that you started doing when you first got into HR to where you are now. So help our uh, followers uh, get a little more insight about your journey. I'm glad you asked it because I really wanted to say, um, you know, more about it. And I'm definitely not in an entry position right now, but I was there at some point. Once I completed my graduation, I started with a contract position. But while I was doing my graduation, I actually got an internship with a company which was completely online. It's called Seattle Web Search. And, I'm, and if they still have uh, internships, go ahead, take that. It's all online. But I got like extreme um, exposure to HR. I got to manage a team there like within three months into the internship. It was all online, so it didn't like, you know, it was not a botheration for my work or anything else. That was my very first idea of like HR. But then once I completed my graduation, I got into a contracting position with Microsoft. And that was like, you know, my second hit with the HR. I think I was very baffled with whatever I did them because I was like, oh, I really love it. How do I take it forward, right? I really wanted to take it forward. So for my all, all of my work at Microsoft was more about having one-to-one -one conversations with the candidates and understanding business acumen at the back end. So that was, that was probably like my hit on with the HR after my graduation. And for everyone who's watching, we actually did a video with Shreya on contracting positions. So I will link that and definitely check it out. And please understand that when you're trying to break into a career in the US, please don't hold yourself back to a title thinking that, oh my gosh, I have eight years of experience in India. Should I be doing an entry level job? Should I be starting with an internship? Because the reality is once you are in there, you can like move really fast. And a lot of people don't understand this, but you might end up uh, getting your first job at $60,000 and as soon as you switch in six months or a year, you can totally ask for 120, 150. So I would not shy away from the right opportunity if it's helping you build that network. Oh, 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 oh,